Well, good afternoon. Good Black Friday to everybody. Hey, how y'all doing? I'm I'm uh, glad to be here again. Uh, my name's Todd Rains. I'm uh, owner of Wood Turning Tool Store and uh, bring these live streams to you every Friday at 2.30. Well, I say every, but we're we're winding this series up. I've got two more episodes after this. I think uh, next Friday, I think that's the fourth, and then the last one is the 11th. So uh, I'll take a break for Christmas and then we'll we'll do another series in January. So I like doing these live streams. I'm streaming to both. Uh, let me get my little my big head out of the way. Uh, both to YouTube and Facebook at the same time. So um, catch me on Facebook or YouTube and uh, you can uh, watch the live stream there. So um, again, uh, 2.30 Todd is kind of my moniker. Uh, it's uh, 2.30 here, Central Time US, uh, where I'm located in uh, North Texas. And so uh, happy to be here again. And uh, uh, I hope everybody had a great and feastful and happy and safe Thanksgiving. So uh, the wife and I, we uh, we had a good time yesterday cooking. I cooked up some focaccia bread, some, some cookies and a few other things. We had steak and asparagus. So hopefully everybody else is uh, well fed. So um, good to have you here. So I've got a few people joining the uh, uh, the live stream. So I think Tony left this uh, uh, message uh, a good half an hour or 40 minutes before the live stream started. Maybe an hour, not quite sure. Good to uh, good to have you here, Tony. Glad, glad you're here. RG Walker. Hi, Todd. Live turning on YouTube or Zoom. Uh, YouTube, uh, as well as Facebook. So um, check out uh, woodturningtoolstore.com. You can find links to my YouTube channel and my Facebook channel up in the very top right corner of the website. So, um, or just search for Woodturning Tool Store in either place, you'll find it. So thanks for being here, R RG. And uh, Tony, Tony Atkins, you've got a YouTube channel now or you sign up to YouTube. So you used to always join on Facebook. So uh you, you, oh, it looks like you're doing both places, Tony. That's good. Good to have you here. Thank you. Uh, Chris Cohen is back. Uh, still in food coma. Excellent. That's good. That's good, Chris. Uh, thanks for joining. Appreciate the, appreciate you seeing you seeing you here. So, Shelly's catching up with everybody. She's on. So uh, she's saying hi, and we'll uh, we'll bring everybody a, a, a welcome message. And there's Tony on. Uh, oh yeah, just signed on. All good. So he's on both Facebook and uh, and YouTube. Ken, oh, I missed. Sorry, click Mary Alice first. Sorry, thing skipped on me. Uh, Ken, uh, yeah, hi Ken. How's Karen? Hopefully everything's well. You had a good uh, Thanksgiving. Thanks for joining. And uh, yeah, Ken's got my moniker two thirty Todd. Jeez, I keep this game skips skipping on me. So hi Mary Alice, good to have you here. And uh, Lee, Lee is back. Thank you, Lee, for joining. Uh, and uh, any problems with tornadoes? Uh, they were south of us uh, quite a bit down in Arlington, so uh, um, nothing up this way in the uh, north of the Dallas area. So we're all good. Thanks for asking, Lee. And uh, uh, happy related Thanksgiving to you all. Absolutely. So what are we doing today? Uh, well, first of all, uh, let me... Um, where's my... Let me get that off for a second. Uh, let me go... A little bit big. Uh, last week we did pens. I turned a couple of pens. Well, I turned one during the live stream, um, and we gave one away. Uh, the Iraqi uh, service ribbon pen went to Steve Wooster. He guessed that correctly. And then uh, we gave the no, the cello pen to uh, Vaughn. Vaughn was a uh, uh, coworker of Shelley. She she's fascinated by what we do here, so that's always good to see. So. Uh, Gary Lowe, hi Todd, just for a short time has got other things on a bit later. Yeah, so it's 8.30 over there, Gary. So uh, definitely thank you for joining here. Uh, we'll be we'll be an hour at the most on this live stream. I don't take them too long. So thank you for joining. Appreciate it. Um, so I turned a couple more pens after that. I finished off the, let me go to the overhead here and uh, get myself down out of the way. So my camera... I didn't turn my slider on, but we'll just do it that way for now. Oop. This uh, blue fin pen turned out kind of nice. I kind of was excited about that. So that looked pretty good. I like that one. 
not sure what I'm going to do with this one yet, but uh, that was fun. And then um, during the live stream, we were using the new uh, precision manual from from Woodpecker, and I said I hadn't done a double barrel to see how the uh, how that worked out. And uh, so I did this little kit. It's just a slim line. Um, some interesting wood on there, though. So, uh, but it worked out well. Uh, very even in terms of uh, moving the uh, bush, uh, the the tube on the bushings to see if there's any concentricity issue, concentricity issues, but none. So I'm happy to report um, the double barrel pen uh, on that mandrel is just as precise. So there you go. A couple more pens. Um, I've got actually a couple blanks on the way for gifts for uh, for. Um, Christmas, so uh, that should be fun. I should really turn this on. And uh, let's go wide. So what do I have on the lathe today? We've got a blank on here that we are going to bear with me as I go to this view, as I move my camera mount, camera thing up here, sorry. We've got a little uh, stick of uh, wood. It's two and a half inches by eight. Uh, it already kind of turned to a cylinder. We're going to turn a little candlestick today. Um, I honestly, this week has been busy, so I haven't had a chance to practice, but I have done a few candlesticks in the past, and here is a set of them. So these candlesticks will uh, um, actually went to as a gift forget where we went them where we sent them but uh, oh i know to my wife's boss so uh but we'll do something similar to this today so we will uh we will make candlestick and uh i've got a few um different things that i'm gonna you know uh ways to hold it we'll go through so um this is just a piece of pine i'll probably end up painting i do have the airbrush set up so we, if we get time we'll we'll paint it as well um, I've got another blank here that I may do another set. So let's get on with a little project and, uh, let me see. Nice. Okay. So no problem. Good to see you. Yeah. Thank you, Gary. Appreciate it. Stick around as long as you can. Tony says nice pens. Thank you, Tony. Uh, I did order one of those, uh, magnetic vertex. I think you called them. So. Uh, one of those kits, so we'll see how those go. So we're going to put a little tenon on the end. Um, where's my parting tool? So I want to get a little tenon on this end so I can stick it in a chuck, and then we can drill a couple of holes. Got this under here just to, why is that hunting so much in terms of focus? It really hasn't done that before. There we go. Okay, so speed's down, power's on. Speed is up, double check, that's tight. We'll take this end down to a tenon that's gonna fit my chuck. I've already sized my um, calipers to that size. These are kind of safety calipers. I got that round, roundness on. I need a little bit more speed. About two grand worth of RPMs. Parting tool. So the only thing I don't like about these safety calipers is they're a little bit too wide. And I've got that pretty much bang on, so that will do. And then, uh, are these dovetail? These are dovetail jaws I'm going to use, so we'll just use this since I have it in hand. That is really hunting on it, isn't it? So... Let me put uh, that up in the corner. So just using the corner of my parting tool, tilt it over slightly to get a diamond sort of shape tool into that corner. And that's close enough of a, uh, of a dovetail I want. Just thinking through the process. Like I said, I hadn't had a chance to uh, practice, but uh, we shall get this project well underway. So let me know if you've done any candlesticks. 
Um, I've done a few. Uh, those maple ones, I had a bit of quilting in them. I should have put a little dye on it on those. I think that would have looked nice, but I left them natural. So with a nice gloss finish. These ones, I'm not sure what I'm going to do in terms of paint, but we'll take a look and see what kind of strikes are fancy. We've got a couple of different. So these are, uh, and I went too small. Let's try the other chuck. That's kind of nice to have a couple of different choices of chucks. It should definitely fit the little Nova jaws. I'm going to go give the chuck a little snap and a little kind of suck into place. So these are, these are actually straight walled on the inside, but they have the little bird's beak that'll bite into the, uh, I didn't make the dovetail too, too aggressive. So we'll take a look there. You see it's biting in. It's kind of hard to see, but they're dovetailed on the outside, but straight walled on the inside with a bird's beak. So be aware of how your chucks are, are um, oriented. So I'm going to clean up this surface first before I do any drilling. So let's do that. Let the bring this up we're going to use the skew i think might be the best thing that i have in my hand it's a bit of a small skew but i kind of like it it's one i use a lot and you can't see that sorry about that folks so a little uh three quarter inch skew it's an allen laser skew Two by four material, it's a little chippy. It's pretty dry. I inherited this wood from another turner who was moving and couldn't store it any longer, so. I wanna get rid of that little chip that we had there and I think Good, I'm good all the way around. So I kind of want to make sure I've got the same diameter that I have on the other piece. The other piece is a bit thinner, so. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, thanks, honey. So Shelly's saying that this corner picture is maybe a bit disorienting. Maybe it's because my arm is in the way, going that way. I could raise it up and we'll go up higher or I could switch to camera four. Maybe that might be a better view. Um, so I measured two and a quarter. I think I want to go down maybe just a little bit more uh, in diameter. That is a lot of body leaning, really just kind of moving my body, holding the chisel still. So that looks good. Let's start there. Uh, we're going to drill a one inch hole in this end. This is going to be the base. Um, and uh, I'm going to drill the hole and probably cone it up with the, the cone and just do a little bit of shaping down here because we're going to remount it on this chuck here. This is a one inch. Um, Jaws will expand into that hole. I've actually got a one 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 sixteenth drill bit to use, so uh, that's what we'll be using. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and do that now. I 
Yeah, we're just changing out the tailstock center. For Jacob's Chuck. And let's get that drill bit in there. There we go. So we've got a little bit of a drill bit there. Uh, we'll go in about an inch deep, maybe just a bit more. This uh, jaws are about an inch tall. Slowing the lathe down a little bit. Get that point started on the uh, drill bit and just let it sort of rest in there. Holding the quill just to stabilize it. And I want the sawtooth bit to kind of just score the surface. Make sure it's got a nice sort of centered place to drill. And then I think we're free to... That way I get no run out on this at all. That looks to be more than an inch. Let's see. Yeah, we got them an inch and a quarter, so that's good. Plenty of space. So the other thing we want to do now is take the drill bed out. Don't touch the hot end. Pull out that drill quill. We'll need that again, maybe, in a second. Is I want to face off this end, because this is going to be the bottom. So let's skew that off. I wonder if I can do it without... Gonna need to drop this tool rest. Point to the skew. See if I get any vibration. I may have to uh, put a cone center on my tailstock, but I'll try it first without. Still a little high. Okay, point uh, down at this bevel in the angle I want to travel, which is parallel or slightly undercut. We see a bit of a gap in there. I've got some torn grain in here on the inside of the hole. I'm not really too concerned. We're, we may end up, what I may do on this design is uh, plug that up with a contrasting piece of wood, but I've got a nice sort of undercut rim there. Hit that button, there we go. It's hard to see. I kind of see it now. So that's good. So now let's remount that in a... Where's my key for this one? There it is. In this one-way chuck with the pin jaws. There we go. Just taking that other chuck off, we'll stick this one on. Snap that on there. And that's gonna go in just like that as we expand into the opening. Oh, wrong way. 
before I crank that down too tight, I shall bring up the tailstock just to make sure we're centered. A little bit of pressure on the tailstock. Tighten that up. That should be good. So we'll do some shaping. We'll probably take the uh, top down thinner. Oh, you can't see that again. Look at that, Todd. There you go, a little wider. Let's take that off for a second. So we'll take this down a little thinner. Um, that, and we'll skinny it down. I'll maybe put a little wax. So on these... Uh, on these ones, the um, the center ring is a bit small. It's basically to catch wax as it drips down over the edge. Uh, so I'll make I'll try and make one a bit wider here on this on this one. We'll see if we can do that. That's a good skew practice. So there we go. And then so basically, we'll have the cup. About there, maybe in there, that, that looks good. And then the base here, this is gonna be all base. So that might be a little long, might be a little longer. So maybe this, yeah, that might be. So the base ends here, we get this, uh, you know, Saturn ring here, and then we get a nice flared base here. So we'll do a bit of shaping. Um, and actually, maybe I'll drill first since I got all the stability. Most candles, are um, seven eighths in diameter at their base. So if you have a seven eighth inch drill bit, use that and you will uh, get most candles, most, you know, sort of, you know, those long skinny candles. Um, you can use those. So we'll, uh, we'll use the seven eighth inch drill bit and we'll drill in a little bit. We'll power on, speed up. Just under a thousand nine hundred or thereabouts. Again, let the the drill bit engage. This is a Forstner bit, which really isn't the right bit for it, is it? Do I have a? I've got a bit of a sawtooth on there, but Forstner bit has the the straight side. Sawtooth bit has a. Uh, I want to go about maybe an inch. I'm going to lose some of that top. That's only three quarters. I'm going to go a little bit more because I may end up losing a bit of this top. Um, but that was, I was saying, Forstner bits have the, uh, the flat um, edge there. True sawtooth bits have this sawtooth pattern on it. So um, sawtooth goes in easier into end grain than Forstner bits. I really don't prefer my keyed chuck sometimes over these keyless chucks. Simply for that reason, sometimes these spin out too easy. Okay, so now we can get a cone center and do some real shaping. We've got all the holes drilled we need. Uh, to make this candlestick sort of work and function, we got the candle end and we got the work holding end. Bring up our tailstock. Cone center. And let's see, do we have any more? We got Ed joined. Ed Maston, good to see you here. Thank you for joining, sir. Howdy, Shelly. Hope you are enjoying the day off. and had a nice Thanksgiving. Yes. Well, Shelly is actually doing a bit of work today, as was I. It kind of goes with the territory when you work from home. And um, you know, me and myself having a small business. So, but yeah, we took some. So definitely need time off, Ed. Hope you and Tina had a good 
good Thanksgiving. So I will use rather a large um, spindle gouge. I think it's a 5 8 gouge. Um, so I'll just do some basic shaping and then we'll we'll uh, leave this diameter and we'll shape these other two parts. So I'll take this diameter down quite a bit. A lot of roughing cuts here. Zoom that one just a little bit more. Okay, so kind of looking for just a classic shape. I gotta remember to clean up that end. Maybe I'll do that now before I forget. Same skew chisel. going to pull this away just to get that final little bit there. One more cut. There we go. That was that skate problem. I'm looking for a nice sort of cup shape up here. That's pretty good. Skew. Let's see, well. there for now. We'll come back to that. We'll just get rid of this. And then we'll This would be an interesting design if you had complementary curves. I'm just wondering, contemplating that now. So let me, oh geez, I wasn't really showing you what I was doing over here. So um, I've got a convex curve and a convex curve. 
the old Solnik uh, candlestick it has a convex and a concave. I think it was concave here and then convex up here over a long skinny area. So that would be an interesting design, but I'm going to keep it simple and keep convex curves on both surfaces. So. Now the question becomes, is this disc too big? And uh, what shape do I want on each side? I think I like it more flatter on top. Although I do want the wax to kind of roll off or no, I want it to catch it. So we'll try and Make it flat. Up top here. Something like that. Design on the fly. Tourist is a bit low for this, but I'm just going to take a quick look, see how that looks. Looks nice. Let me zoom you in a little bit. Turn that off. I've got a little bit of frayed stuff down there. I got to clean up. This side looks okay. I've got a little, little last cut to do right here. I've got a transition I got to fix. This looks flat though. And it's always tough to see proportions when they're laying sideways. So I'm going to do, I'm going to widen this out. I'm going to actually take this off, not off the, uh, the chuck. I'm going to take the chuck off the, the spindle. And I want to hold this up this way to me to kind of see. And I wonder. Oops, oops. Camera four. So I'm trying to get a visual as to whether this is proportional. I think this looks good. I think this is the right size. I don't want to go any smaller. It is about the same diameter as this here, and it's a bit smaller than this. So I might even take this down a bit further, skinny this out a little bit, I think. That way I've got a nice flow. I'm on digital calipers here. We'll take a quick gander at what I'm kind of getting at. I got 1.8 inches there. I've got two inches there. And 2.16 there. So if I take this down a little bit, I think it'll it'll make it look nicer. We'll have a nice sort of skinny, bigger, bigger sort of flow down down the side here. So let's do that. Where are we at in the uh, in the chat of things? Let's see. 
So what is Ed saying here? Um, me too. Mowed the leaves and sucked the curb. LOL. Celebrating a 44th. Oh, well, congratulations, Ed. Happy, uh, happy anniversary. That's not a flattering view of my belly. Let me, let me change this. We'll go back to overhead and uh, I'll just stick my head in the corner for a second. So that's good, Ed. Glad to hear it. We'll get together next week with the, uh, the TRWC stuff. We'll get that figured out. Shelly saying happy anniversary. Congratulations, you and Tina. What is, uh, thanks for setting the record. Uh, that record will not be broken. Oh, thanks. Setting a record that will not be broken. Okay, yeah. 44 years is a good one. We're, Shelly and I are coming up to 30 next year, I think. Skinny it out. And it looks a bit chunky. Okay. Um, she has spoken. So that's what we were going to do. Glad, uh, glad you agree with me, Shelly. <laughs> it's more, it's more like I have to agree with her. So these are pretty things that I, uh, I make her and she always says, come back with something pretty. So that's what we're attempting to do. We'll skinny this little top section out and we'll clean up a little bit of a few of the cuts here and there. Then we'll sand and paint perhaps so we want to skinny this out a little bit that's looking pretty good we'll take this And let me zoom that in on you on it for a bit for you. Maybe I'll stick myself over here as we turn. I'll just leave it there. So I'm trying to get this little furry spot right down the corner right there. I really should hone this guy a little bit. Hone my... Oops. Trying to get this on camera for you. Just honing my skew. Some last final cuts. Also hone this third edge. This one here. Okay. Let's make one. Continuous cut down there. Need to look a little bit what's down there. So I don't really want to sand this or have to sand this too much. At least this area. I just have to get down in that corner with the toe. I'm going to do the heel. I'm used to the heel. I'm not used to the toe down there. There we go. I think that's got it. That looks pretty good down there. I think that's skinny. I'm a little, am I a little chippy there. A little chippy right there. I may, I may take one more stroke on that. sand out okay on this side the transition what do we have down there oh yeah i've got to clean up this whole cut here on this edge so we'll do that all the way down point to the tool lift the handle to engage the Starting to get a little thin, so it's sounding like it's complaining. Okay. 
which it is. Until we get down to there. I may have to sand this. That feels better though. It's smoother. It's not such a bad transition, but I do need to get that center. It's hard to get a camera angle in this side of something like this, but there's just a little heel mark down there. Okay, this feels good in here. I can sand that. That's pretty good. I can sand all that. So I think we're good. I'm just going to check this edge. Yeah, we'll go with that. We'll sand. And turn the dust extractor on, dust collector. I'm used to UK folks saying extractor all the time instead of collector. Okay, let's say. Before I turn that back on. Tony's got to go, got to run, have to help Nikki. Y'all have a great weekend. You too, Tony. Say hi to Nikki. We'll see you soon. Uh, Ken, you mean to tell me that you are newlyweds? <laughs> yes. Yeah, Ken, compared to you, we are. Thank you. Uh, 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 you too, Tony. Okay, so Shelly's saying goodbye. So let's carry on. We'll do a bit of sanding, and uh, we will maybe talk about finishing and painting a little bit. So I'm just going to whip through, start with 120, see how we get on with that. Dust collector back on. Dust collector is sitting right behind me and turn on the pipes. Let's see, that might be a better view. Dust hood here. So as we're as I'm doing this, maybe uh, maybe somebody can come up with a a painting scheme. I was thinking of painting it white to begin with, and then uh, doing some maybe Christmas themes, maybe uh, green and red. Leave this white. I don't know. Um, Shelley, chime in. What do you uh, what do you think? What do you want to see? You want something Christmas themed, or you want some uh, solid color? Um, we could do stains. We could leave it a stain. Red. Just red. Only red. Only red? Do I like a uh, ombre red? Rich dark, red? Rich, dark, cheap, <laughs> cheap, deep, deep cherry red. So she likes red. So we'll, uh, we'll maybe go with red. This is why I wanted to finish this end here. And like I said, we could, since we've got a nice one and one sixteenth inch plug in this end, um, do a base with a tenon on it that's uh, one and one sixteenth and uh, put a, uh, a different colored base on it. So I think that might be an interesting take on this too. Steven's in the house. Thank you, Steven, for joining over the pond. Hopefully having a good evening. So uh, Gary uh, Lowe is here for a bit. Hopefully Gary's still here, I'm not sure. So it's good to have a couple of UK folks. It's always uh, fun to uh, meet you Wednesdays and see you here Fridays, so. <laughs> Smart man, she says, yes. Yes, do what the boss says, right? That's what I think too, so. I'm turning as the speed here is about 880 RPM. I think it's pretty good. This is kind of a, uh, a, uh, a pine, so it is kind of a little bit pitchy. Um, not too bad. It's clogging up the sandpaper a little bit, you know, uh, but not so bad. And I'm only going to sand this backside with the 120. I'm going to leave that, probably sand that with two, 220, two, 280, whatever it is. And I'm going to have to take this off the pad. Get that right up in into that corner. I 
And same thing here. Try not to touch too much of that disc. And we'll just ease that edge a little bit. That's 120. 180. I'm going to reverse this a little bit. So I'm reversing the speed and uh, I have to go and sand on top now because the lathe is spinning that way. I kind of do like to switch lathe directions between grits. Um, you pick up all these things, watching other people, learning, reading from other people, and experimenting. So, If you got any tips or tricks, uh, anything that you suggest on this piece, let me know. Um, but uh, um, Shelly's already said it's got to be red, but uh, if there's any sort of I think I'll shoot it with sanding sealer here in a minute. And this is going to be figure out how to do this side. almost requires left-handed sanding, which I haven't done a lot of. Let's see what's happening here. Kind of some good scratches down in here, so. We'll go with the grain on this grit. It is kind of pretty, the way it's looking. You know, with the grain and stuff. It is uh, definitely something to think about you know, using this kind of soft wood with a stain to show that grain pattern off. So, something to think about. I do have to get down in the, flip it back in the other direction because I have to get down in here. sanding or inertia sanding might be an easier thing to do on this thing but those might be uh, 120 scratches I need to get out back to 120 with the grain there are some deeper scratches that I needed to get out. Soft wood like this is uh, has sometimes uh, fools you on your sanding technique. If you're used to sanding maples and sycamores and you know harder woods, then you go to tr uh, turn and sand you know pine or Douglas fir or spruce, then it's uh, it does trick you a little bit because it it's slightly different softer wood obviously and it's uh, easy to kind of skip the grit or go too quick on a grit or um, miss the sanding scratches that you from your previous grit so stop and take a look and uh, it'll certainly help I don't know that I need to go much more than 180 with a painted piece. I 
That was 120. Back to 180. Let's see. Oh, Gary's still here enjoying it. Thank you, Gary. Scott, good to have you here. No problem being late. We're doing a candlestick, as you can see. It's kind of one of these total looks. We've got a little, this is a drip, uh, wax dripping uh, protection, I guess. Uh, Ken, you better go through it. Yeah, you're right, Ken. I, I, that's decisions made, <laughs> as Shelly says. So, for those that don't know, Shelly is my wife. She's in there moderating, telling me what colors to make this, telling me to make it thinner. So, when the boss tells you to do something, you know, you better, you better pay attention. So let's, uh, let's call that good. I can always sand off paint and do it again. This feels good. That feels better than 180 on this thing. So I will leave it there. We'll shoot it with a bit of sanding sealer. I think my sandpaper is wearing out a bit too. I have a 180 down here. 80. No. No, I got these. Abernet. Got some Abernet 120 or 180, so. Now that's cutting better. Yeah, I got to throw out that piece of sandpaper. It's always good to kind of use sandpaper as though you don't pay for it. That's somebody, somebody told me that once, but I don't. I end up hanging pieces around too long. It's just a bad habit. I think it's a habit from, you know, um, just not wanting to waste money. But it's not really a waste if you're spending too much time sanding with one grit that's not working for you. Or a piece of paper that's not working for you. Yeah, this is doing much better. Much better. Okay. call that done. I do need my air gun for a second. Hook that back up to the regulator oh come on really there we go I've got some sanding sealer here That showed up nice, didn't it? This is a Mohawk product, Easy Vinyl Sanding Sealer. Balin's product, or Balin's, well, I think they got bought by Mohawk, so. This should be quick drying. It's a little wet there yet. Dry over here. Yeah, a bit tacky there yet. Yeah, that's, that's what happens. You, you rush it too much, you get a little fingerprint in there. But I'm going to sand this ever so slightly with 240, so we'll be okay. 120, 180, 240. 
that off let's just wipe it down this really isn't a tack cloth but that's what i'm using it like so i've got a little airbrush set up let me see what camera to show that setup this one i think will work and that's showing it yeah Okay, camera four. So this is just behind me. It's actually mounted to my bandsaw. Um, I've got a little regulator, got the air coming in, regulator. I've got two ports that I can shut off. This is my airbrush here. So let's go red. We got naphthol red light or, oh, this is purple. No, we don't want that one. Red it is. So a couple drops into our airbrush. I should have shook in that first. I think I'm going to have to. That looks horrible in there. Bear with me as I get my disposal jug. So you can buy... Uh, buy certain things to dispose paint of in. I've got an old milk jug, a hole in it. Just spray it in there to get rid of it. It's not the best solution because it does still billow out at you, but it captures a lot. So you can grab this red again and that paper towel. These are little uh, golden airbrush paints. They got a little bearing ball bearing in there to mix up the paint which is nice i didn't shake it before i poured that little bit in there so let's try this again that's looking better i will turn the air collector on i'm going to move it back a little bit just to catch the excess so Here's the paintbrush. Maybe I'll go a little wider so you can kind of see. Before I go too much further, I've done this before and I've learned my lesson. I need to tape off my chuck. I get a little bit of paint on the jaw, it's not a big deal. I just don't want it covered. There we go. Okay. Start this up again. Airbrush. Already out.
while I'm taping. Why not, right? Is that going to spin? No. Close enough. Okay. We may have to touch that up after it's off. Got a little spot right under here. Slow rotation. Let's see. Lan says, wow, that added life to the grain. Yeah, it did. And once it dries, you'll be able to see it a bit more. I can even sand it back and put another color on. We'll see what, uh, see how this looks afterwards. Thanks for joining up, uh, Lan. Good to see you here again. So I've got some uh, airbrush cleaner. I do this right after I, uh, and that sound is the tape uh, brushing on the, uh, Trying to clean this out, I plug the end, pull the trigger, and that forces um, the kind of backwards uh, cleaning fluid, and then spray it out, and it kind of gets most of the most of the stuff there. I need to find a place to put that close by, and then take your finger on a paper towel, kind of shove it down in there. Wipe it up. It's always good to kind of clean this kind of quickly after your use. And uh, do a little bit, a few more drops of this stuff in there. Pull against paper towel, pull the trigger, bubbles up. Spray that out into your paint can or your milk jug, whatever you got. And look, we're getting pretty clean. So. That's how I do cleanings in between, even in between colors. Sometimes I'll uh, I'll do that if it's sitting for a while. But uh, I do have to take it apart and clean it at some point because I haven't cleaned it in about a few weeks. Oh, let's stop that annoying noise. We can stop that just by tucking that in. It's still quite wet. So, well, that's kind of going to be the end of the stream. We're about four minutes over, uh, but uh, that's a fire engine red, Christmas red candlestick with a little wax um, protector. So if you hold this in your hand and your wax is dripping, hopefully this little ledge catches it. So um, thank you for joining. Uh, everybody have a wonderful weekend. Um, before I go, I've got a couple of things just I want to show. So we are here uh, Friday, next Friday, and the Friday after that, two more in this session for a small project series, December 4th and then the, the 11th, I believe. And then on the 12th, I am going to be part of this Turner's Retreat. 
uh, demonstration day, Saturday, September, sorry, September, Saturday, December 12th, uh, six demonstrators, two in the UK. We've got Stuart Fruini and Chris Parker, two in Canada, John Samajo and Kate Bolger, and then two in the US, myself and Jeff Hornig. So go check out woodturnersretreat.com. Check out the Facebook page. Uh, tickets are 20 bucks a head uh, for an all day, six different demos. Um, and uh, it's going to be a Zoom room. So we'll have uh, some show and tell. We'll have some chit chat, places to socialize. So it should be, uh, should be a lot of fun. Hope to see you there on that one. Uh, with that, I am going to go and uh, wish everybody a fantastic weekend, like I said. Um, and uh, we'll see you next year. Uh, sorry. <sighs> next week. Next week. Not next year. Not quite New Year's yet. Gary's cheers out, managed to make it all the way through. Thank you. See you soon. We'll see you, Gary. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, 2.30 Todd out and uh, we'll see you next week bye for now have a safe weekend bye okay hit the stop button todd there we go and